Hello and welcome to Tech Bridge, your action packed adrenaline pumped tech community technology show. Yeah, yeah with right. special effects. And Explosion. caffeine and blue paste. So today we want to talk about a lot of tech things because that's what the show is all about. And mm. we're going to start with a company that, well, I wasn't expecting to see in the news. No, again. A return of an old friend? Yes. Mm. His name is Tom. I and he works at MySpace. Wait, I don't think he does anymore, actually. No, I won't be surprised. No. But, but anyway, MySpace, yes. <laughs> uh, MySpace have released a video, a teaser video, of a drastic redesign of their website. And it looks good. It looks insanely good. Like, really, really good. Like, I was better than Facebook. Well, actually, any design's better than Facebook. <laughs> But better than Facebook, and the design's even better than Google+. Plus. Well, yeah, I mean, it's something completely different. Yeah. It is the Windows phone of the social networks. Yeah, now, and I think that this could actually have a chance of succeeding, because of MySpace, though it's grown old now, it's, it's a recognisable name. Yeah. Whereas Google+, Plus obviously, isn't that recognisable. But the problem, with the, the problem with the recognisable name with MySpace is it is recognisable now for being... The old thing. Mm, I mean, you know it's know? still like quite big for musicians and, and music. Well, music's but... not going away. Yeah, uh, so we'll quickly go over what we've seen in the video. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a horizontal UI, yeah, as opposed to vertical like most um, websites. Um, it you scroll across and you have your timeline type thing, sort of everything, your wall, yeah. if you will, uh, which has music posts with big album art. You have uh, status updates. When you update your status, this is, I really liked this touch, and I don't know whether people are going to find this intrusive or not, but I really liked it. When you update your status, it takes up the whole screen. Mm. Right? No, it's quite good because it uses the whole real estate of the screen. Exactly. Yeah. It's not just that like tiny box. And it looks gorgeous. Yeah. I'm saying to you, this is what I wanted Windows Phone to look like. Yeah, and to me it does. I mean, it is very sort of square, metro, we can't say that. Um, <laughs> very metro-like, but... Yeah, no, it does look sort of horizontal squares, sort of, yeah, it, it looks sort of mesh like in my opinion. I mean, it has a space, when you go into events, it has a space for, like, on Facebook at the moment, when you look at an event, you've got time, date, place, people, hmm. which is fair enough. On the MySpace version, you've got time, date, place, people, and then you've got soundtrack, essentially the music that is at the event, hmm. uh, that will be played, what, yeah, so the full sort of set list. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so music isn't going anywhere. There are artist it's, pages. It is good that they're keeping their emphasis on music, I think. Well, yeah, and that's what MySpace's strength has always sort of mm. been. So they're playing to their strengths and they're putting out a kick-ass design. I think that's a lot of potential. Like, more potential, I think, than Google Plus does. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I actually think we're actually going to see something I never thought I'd be saying ever on any form of video or audio or anything. But I actually think we may be seeing people go from Facebook Mm. back to MySpace because I'm not totally agree I was you. talking to a mainstream user today uh, not going to mention her name but I was talking to a mainstream user today and I showed her that video and she went uh, she, I said uh, MySpace is coming back you know they, they want to re-release their design and she went oh MySpace is old blah 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 and I showed her the video and she went actually I quite like that mm. no I, it, as soon as you sort of talk, cause you told me about this story earlier before you just showed me the video and as soon as I heard MySpace I mean before you even said it you were like, don't shoot me, but I'm going to show you a MySpace video. Yeah. And I was like, that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what I find interesting, though, is I don't think they're going after Facebook, which may surprise you. What The first thing I notice when you log in is you log in with Twitter or Facebook Connect. Mm. So it really does show that they are still sticking with uh, the music and giving people options, which is very unheard of these days. Um, mm. and, uh, but you can have your own MySpace login if you want yeah. you know they are still offering that and I think I genuinely no, think they may good. make a comeback yeah and I mean just I mean it's just such a small little thing to have those sign up options but they make signing into things so much easier <laughs> that not people want to if you're registering for a new service like you're more like to, likely to try out if you can sign up with just one button press exactly rather than signing up whole registration forms the problem the problem I find with those is you sign up with the one button press, and then you want to sign up with an actual sign up name, and then you've got to do the whole form, which is fine. I'm fine with, but then you've got two accounts. Mm. They don't merge them together. They don't. There's 
I very rarely find it an easy way to merge two accounts together. Yeah, true. But yeah, MySpace could be coming back and coming back hard. Yeah. So if you want to sign up for the new beta of the new layout or here when it comes out, uh, go to new.myspace.com. Yeah. And suggest you do that right now. We have. <laughs> exactly. Moving on. Right. So now our discussion for this week is your tech gripes. So this could be anything to do with the technology you use, or it could be the tech industry, the tech world, the tech community. Um, so I'm going to go over just a couple of things which annoy me and things that you've sent in that tell me that you find annoying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> long way of random saying things. But first of all, is season passes for games. Now, I know you're not much of a gamer. Okay. Uh, but do you understand the concept of season passes? So season passes, it's kind of like World of Warcraft, like the monthly pay type thing? No, it's more like, it's, it's for downloadable content. Okay. They've, it's only just been coming in over like the sort of past, past year or so. But it's basically, after you've bought a game, you can buy a season pass that that's usually quite premium. It's usually sort of, it can cost up to about sort of, sort of 30, 40 quid, so almost the game itself. Mm. And then that means that all the downloadable content afterwards you then get for free. Okay. So usually you get like a sort of 20-25% discount on buying them all separately. So there's some sort of incentive there. Right. But at the same time, you don't always know like the sort of quality of the download content you're going to be getting. So it's sort of a way of developers making you buy into it without possibly giving you great content. So you can only buy the season pass to start with, at like the beginning. You don't have to, but it only sort of makes sense to. But what if you buy it midway through? You, I'm assuming you miss out the, the DLCs that you've gone You can download past. those or, as well. But what, what I'm saying is if you buy the season pass mm. midway through, like DLC. So DLC 1 comes out, DLC 2 comes out. You buy the season pass. Do you get DLC 1 and 2? Yeah, you get Yeah. So, I don't know. It might. It kind of works in a way. It, I, I get what you're saying. If you buy it at the beginning and then like all the DLCs that come out are rubbish, yeah, you kind of you're wasting a lot of money. But if you do it where the DLC oh the first DLC wasn't that great, second DLC was awesome. I'll mm. buy the season pass and I can get DLC one for free anyway. Yeah, that's kind of a way of looking at it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it, this, that's the thing is you sort of secure in it. I mean, there's a couple of games uh, that sort of like you said, like some of the downer content had like rubbish reviews and mm -hmm. just worth buying so sort of if you buy just the ones that were good then you'd be saving more money so it, it's kind of a way of developers paying making you pay twice for one game kind of thing yeah i don't know it's an iffy thing and i don't think it really works if i'm honest mm. i think you should just stick with downloadable content is pays pay as you go yeah and what about free to play what, free, to play? free to play right so free to play is an interesting one because everyone loves free mm. But, and um, but I think with free to play, there needs to be when you go to a free to play game. I think there need it needs to be more of the tiny tower model. The tiny tower model is free to play, but you can pay that little more for the bucks. Yeah. But you can make bucks really easily. Yeah. So you're not sort of forced to pay. It's when there's like you're playing a game and it's you're playing for free, and then you go to the buy menu. It says buy a carousel, and you like go to the carousel. It's like either. A billion coins yeah. or one gold coin, which you can pay like three ninety nine to buy. Those ones are the ones that annoy me. Yeah, that's because they're sort of like extended demos in a way. Those sort of ones. Yeah, but there does need to be some sort of limit on them. I mean, they do need to sort of. You don't want to be spending more than you would buy in the game outright. So like you wouldn't yes, want exactly. to be spending more exactly. than like thirty forty quid yeah. on the game kind of thing. I mean with. Uh, well, the, the, no, another thing that annoys me about free-to-play games is the fact that developers like EA and um, you know and people like uh, Zanga, uh, out they are that's all they're doing now. Mm. EA released uh, like they're they're releasing all their social games on Facebook and they're free, they're free-to-play, but they've got like loads of I, IPAs, yeah. and now they're even doing it for the App Store. You know, you're releasing free games, but it I think it's a really really tricky question because like I said everyone loves free games yeah. Yeah, and you're going to play a free game I mean Battlefield what they released a free to play Battlefield and that was yeah. an awesome game yeah and I didn't feel compelled to need to no. pay for that I mean that was sort of it was a bit restricted but that was more of a entry into the Battlefield franchise kind of thing so you play Battlefield free to play and then you end up buying Battlefield yeah. 3 yeah which I think is a better model for free to play games yeah I think buy the free version as a demo 
which you can play for as long as you want, mm -hmm. but restrict it, as opposed to buy this game, which is completely open, but you've got to pay through your nose to actually do anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, next week we get to play the one that's been taking all the headlines, and that's Warface at Eurogamer. Now, if you don't know what Warface is, it's a free-to-play game made by uh, Crytek, the same people who made Crisis. Mm -hmm. And now this game looks fantastic, amazing graphics, and yeah. But we have a few more gaming stories later on coming up um, about Zenga, EA, and one that you want to show me called The War oh, Z. Yeah, I'm looking forward to your, your thoughts on this. Yeah. So carrying on with our tech ropes, um, another one that was sent in to me was Cloud Storage, how we're almost becoming reliant on it, which is sort of a bit of a wrong model because of... Cloud storage is great. It's great that you can access things anywhere, but they're sort of phasing out local storage quite a bit, which yeah. is a bit worse. It's nice to know you have safe local storage. I don't think local storage is going anywhere for a while. This is my personal thoughts. I, I don't think... As much as we're seeing the big push for cloud storage, I don't think we'll lose local storage until at least like 2030 or beyond. I yeah. really don't think... It depends think on what for. Like streaming games, I can see being quite big in the next next few years. Yeah, streaming yeah. games. Um, but, I don't know, maybe big PC games, I don't think they're going anywhere. No. They'll still be on disc. As much as, you know, games are now being pushed for downloads, you obviously got the Mac App Store. Well, I said games. Mm -hmm. uh, you got the Mac App Store uh, for, you know, Mac titles as an example. Um, and that's obviously all over the cloud. Uh, but I think, I don't think local storage is going anywhere just generally because you need somewhere to put these things. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, yeah. Like, you, you know, you, <laughs> I would challenge you to go to Hollywood and get them to edit their next blockbuster completely on cloud storage. Yeah. They won't do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. they may use cloud storage to film and then send to the office almost through the cloud. But they will no way will we be reliant on cloud storage for a while. I don't think. No. Again, it's just how many services do actually see that. Um, like I said, I mean, it, it is a great thing when it when it works. Yeah. Um, no. Which I've been having problems with recently, but I'll get on to that <laughs> at another point of time. Um, another gripe I sent in was the media bias. Um, now we try to be so sort of quite unbiased here, um, but. Yeah, the media does have quite a leniency towards one side and tends to either slander or not cover the competition as much. Okay, so I read your tweets earlier, and you're talking about Apple. Am I? <laughs> yes. I, I disagree, uh, actually. If you look at the media at the moment... Yes, no, I said It's that. very if, negative. If, if you look at my tweet, I, I, I said, despite at the moment, like... But, I understand what you mean by a lot of people favour Apple over the competition and they kind of go, oh, this is never going to succeed. And then obviously it succeeds halfway down the line. I understand that. I don't know whether that's just click, you know, clickbait journalism. Obviously Apple is such a big name that if you see Apple as a headline, yeah, you're going like, click it's, on it. It's like the Nokia event. That was nowhere near as covered as, as the Apple event. Yeah, but Nokia, as much as Nokia are still on the rise, Nokia are, I don't want to say not as big a name, but it, no, 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 I, 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 <laughs> I, I said say, I don't want to say... the biggest name in history. But. Yeah, they're the biggest name in history, but they're the biggest name that almost got lost, got stuck behind. Yeah, they did. And, and people kind of, that's kind why, of, as the media, you should be supporting that. But that's the point. The media want clicks. That's what the media want. I'm talking about online media in, as a yeah. general, but that's what I mean. Media want eyes. Yeah, no one's saying that, but that's surely and, still a bad thing. That's still surely a gripe. That, that is, oh no, definitely a gripe, and I, I completely disagree with it as well. But what I'm saying is, that's how the media works. The media want yeah. eyes, and they're going to get more eyes by saying Apple event than saying Nokia event. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, uh, to completely disagree with, I, I think, like we do on the show, we try and cover as many companies as we can. Mm. Uh, we try and cover startups, we talk about Kickstarter quite a bit. Um, so but, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's annoying, but I don't think, I think until... The media aren't looking for eyes. I think that's going to kind of be the way. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's something you can't really avoid. Uh, but that brings me on to the last one, and that's fanboys. And that's <laughs> just, that, that's a general term. Like, there's one certain type. <laughs> there is Windows <laughs> fanboys. There could be Linux fanboys if they're out there. There's black Bree. 
uh, <laughs> Android, Windows Phone, whatever you are. Um, I mean, we had a HTC fanboy post on our last video about the HTC uh, 8X. Exactly. Com. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just just in general, like you, you should always sort of support the competition. You should always look at the competition. You should just keep an open mind and support other people's views. Um, like I do, and I mean, I keep getting criticised because I criticise Apple. But that's not me not liking Apple products. I've been on an iPhone for a long time. Um, Apple always were the best for me, and I only critique their products and their services because of I want them to improve. Yeah. But that's all I do it for. I, I've got no personal gain against it. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I get what you mean. My, fanboys are annoying. I can't say that without saying that I'm not one. Because obviously I, I have shown to be one. I own an iPhone, an iPad, and a Mac. Yeah, but but you do you, understand. Yeah, when you look at and... when you look at other things, you have to understand obviously that people, people everyone's different. Everyone's gonna like. I don't like Windows Phone. You love Windows Phone. Hmm. You know what I mean? Just simply that. Well, you're a PC. I'm a Mac. Simply those type hmm. of things. That everyone is going to be different, and I think fanboys are honestly a waste of time. Yeah, I was gonna say it just. But like I said, I can't say much because I <laughs> have been a massive fanboy. Hmm. That's what I mean. I mean, I understand other views, and like I always discuss and debate. But again, that's not because I don't understand other people's views. That's just again, just wanting to improve products, give my own views, give as unbiased a view as I possibly can, and make this show different. To be honest. Hmm. Yeah. No. I, I I get what you're saying. Yeah. Right. So let's move on to the Android story. Um, now okay. this is our apps little section. Now, first of all, we were talking about NFC security, weren't we? Last, yep. la- well, actually, the last couple of weeks, I think. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Now, there's a couple of NFC security stories um, that I just want to talk about quickly. First of them, first of them is called an app called Ultra Reset. Now, this allows you to have free train rides. Um, it's in the US, I think, and basically, yeah, it, it, it hacks the NFC app to give you free train rides. Wait. That that's not good though. Hmm. Why why uh, as much as obviously people are gonna love free train rides, that's actually really bad. Yeah. That's, now this that's is the opposite a... of supporting NFC. That's like NFC evil. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You were smiling. You were like free train rides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not. This isn't a public release. The, the developers uh, of this have, have kept it private for so how they long. Get, they get free train rides. They get free train rides, but for how long this stays private, I don't know. Um, now, the other one was a uh, security flaw with some Samsung phones at the moment. Like, you can remotely wipe them over NFC as well. That's not good. That's not no, good that, either. NFC, NFC's got a few problems, which is why I've always had a massive sort of problem with it. Mm. NFC is it's new, it's buggy, and it's being pushed too hard, in my opinion. No, I'll totally disagree. <laughs> no, no, but what I mean is all, say the, that all these companies are pushing it like... NFC this, this is what you can do with NFC, but they're not going, actually, NFC is also very dangerous. You could lose everything on your phone. They do pretty much say that. I mean, it, it's the same, I mean, you can exploit iPhones, like, yeah. any, anything can be exploited. Anything but it can be exploited, but I just think... That, that they have said that it, can, that it can be a security scare, but then, so can everything. I mean... But you can't just have a kind of nonchalant go... So can everything. You lo- The amount of people I know that do not back up their phones, especially on the Android side. Yeah, but you can't... Like, you have to have these problems in order to fix them. Yes, yes, I agree. All right, I'm, I'm going to get on a little bit of my rant. I haven't done one of these in a while. You have an... Okay, I'm going to have an example. You have an iPhone. You're taking photos with your iPhone. You've never plugged it into a computer because Apple said, don't plug it into a computer. Do not back up. You're backing up to the iCloud. Actually, that's a really bad example. I, I, I phones don't have NFC. <laughs> You've got a phone with NFC. You're taking a load of photos. You're not backing it up to your computer. You're backing it up to the cloud mm-hmm. or whatever. And then someone comes along, wipes your phone. You have a few pictures in the cloud. That's it. You've lost everything on your phone. And it's not your fault. It's the phone. You've paid money to a company to let them give you the option to wipe your phone. But that's just security in general. It's like, no, oh, this is going to go back some, but like when we were in secondary school, like Bluetooth was new, we always used to Bluejack. Yeah. Um, like sort of some of our, uh, can I say co-workers? <laughs> <laughs> some of the other students' phones. Um, so that we could, yeah, like you could make calls on their phones, you could send messages to 
their mothers <laughs> saying I want to come out. Yeah, but, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, NFC is, it's being pushed. I don't know what it is, but it's being pushed like it's a massive good thing. But I haven't seen anywhere where, except for like tech news and stuff where it's saying, oh, actually, this is really dangerous. I see it all the time. Like, I, and I only see good stories about it as well. It, it's so simple. It's so good. It's, it's simple and good, but it's dangerous. And I just want to push out the message to the mainstream mm. that it is dangerous. Yeah, I, I think they've got the message. I think a lot of people do realise that it, it's it got its flaws, kind of. Um, but, I mean, it, it, this is going to be fixed within no time anyway. It's only Samsung phones. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, round two, bro. Um... <laughs> Another one is Pass Wallet. Now, obviously, Pass Book came in iOS 6, and yeah, Android and has nicked it. Android <laughs> has basically copied it, like, well, not Android themselves, uh, Android <laughs> app has taken it, because it actually uses uh, Apple's PK Pass files, and you can import those into the app and actually use... I was under the impression that PK Pass files were open. Hmm? They were, like, sort of open source. That's why we had uh, Pass Source before... Um, oh, the App Store came out before before oh, I iOS six. That with Apple, to before be iOS six came out, well, FaceTime is an open standard. No, FaceTime, not. FaceTime is an open standard. That was the th- one of the main things that Steve said on stage. He said FaceTime is an open standard. Uh, no, I, I can't. Was it FaceTime? I can't, no, because I, I said I can't make a client now to FaceTime you. I, I'm gonna just gonna have to have a read up. You you keep talking. <laughs> Yeah, um, it should be an open standard for FaceTime. Um, iMessage should be open standard as well, but it's not. <laughs> well, iMessage, I think iMessage is in the realm of BBM. Uh, iMessage is in the same boat as BBM. BBM is, uh, yeah, BBM is BlackBerry exclusive. iMessage is, I, is yeah. Apple exclusive. Yeah, yeah, it's just in that sort of ideal world. Um, yeah, in the meantime, we'll talk about Twitter's UI update. Now, Twitter had the launch of uh, yeah. version 5. Sorry, yeah. interrupt you quickly. Facebook, despite Steve Jobs' open store, open standard promise, face, okay, so face plan was still confined to Apple, but well, Steve did promise. say it so was promised to be an open like standard. Yeah, so it's not that Apple are completely foreign to having open standards. Um, but they still are. But they kind of are. <laughs> For us, rudely in trouble. <laughs> Yes, Twitter hit, I think it's version 5 of their app. Yeah. Well, right? And it brought headers. So, so this is kind of like, uh, kind of like you get on Facebook's timeline with their cover photos. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can now have like a little background image. And it's also on the web UI as well. Which, yep. Yeah, it, it, it's alright. I don't I don't know why people complain about the official Twitter app so much. I don't think it's it, that bad. I mean, it's not as feature laden as Tweetbot. And I don't really want to support them by how much they're kicking out third party apps so much. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it is too bad enough, to be honest. Yeah, it's not terrible. It's just not you're missing a lot you can you you're missing those feet they they put discovery on top of relationships. If that makes yeah. sense. Like on Tweetbot you've got timeline, mentions, DMs. Mm-hmm. On Twitter you've got timeline, mentions, discover. Yeah, you've got a connect or something. Yeah. Just, which yeah. is like I understand why they're doing that, but it's not a feature some most people use for Twitter. Yeah. So Twi- Twitter's going to be an interesting model. Yeah. So I'm almost starting to think of whether to switch to app.net. Really? In a way. Yeah, just because of, I don't know, it, we're going to have to see how it pans out, but if they start adding in more advertising, if they start being so harsh to third-party developers, then... I mean, I think a way they could easily do it is by saying... The API, you have to put an ad in occasionally and like an ad in the timeline like we do. Mm-hmm. Put our timeline ads in your in your app and I think that'll be fine. I think the main reason they're trying to boot out third parties is the fact that they will then have control of their mobile, of the mobile space and mm-hmm. of the desktop space and of all the spaces. Um, and they'll be able to put, push more ads, which is a business model at the end of the day. But if they just kind of say to third parties, listen, we need you to put these sort of Timeline ads in your app, promoted ads in your app. Um, I reckon they shouldn't have a problem, but it's not what they're doing, and they're choosing to go evil. Yeah, so it, like, we'll have to see how things pan out. But whereas before I said app.net was a bit of a ridiculous idea, then it, it, there's their Twitter themselves are sort of proving me otherwise. Yeah, which is weird. Yeah. Um, 
So yes, uh, it, the new Twitter UI is available on the web, the iPhone or the iPad, and you can of course get it if you go to settings, design, and add a header. You can you automatically have it. Right, so let's move on to our general sort of article section. And okay. now let's talk about the Samsung advert against the iPhone okay. because of that. that was hilarious. <laughs> so this isn't the first time Samsung's done a fake No, iPhone there's iPhone. been quite a few. It has been getting a bit petty. But. Uh, and it is very petty. But even as an Apple fan, it's they're funny adverts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they changed, they changed the dock connector. Yeah, but they make the best dock connectors. <laughs> So what I did you do there? You, you, you touched phones. <laughs> so yeah, we can the send phones out music. The headphones, I have the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, just generally, the Samsung advert came out. It, it, it was funny. It was a Samsung advert. <laughs> say what you will about it, we just thought we'd mention it. Yeah, I was going to say, can't say much more on it, but it was an, a hilarious advert. Yeah. Speaking of the iPhone 5, uh, as much as we didn't get one, uh, we have, my One sister day. has kindly lent us hers uh, to show you guys on the show. So so there is the iPhone 5. Um, initial thoughts, just generally, I mean, if you want to have a full review of the iPhone 5, go visit, you know, Gadgets Boy and other people. Yeah, it's a tie box. It's a tie exactly. Uh, but if you want our general thoughts, stick around. Um, the design, like we said in our after event, episode the design is very nice mm -hmm. it's still the oldish sort of the oldish iphone 4s design but i like the, the the fact that it's so thin and the fact that it's light and the fact that it it, it fits well it's the same way i reacted when i first held your nexus 7 yeah. compared to my ipad it, it, it feels i can hold it like a psp and it feels sort of right i hold it in landscape it feels right yeah no i mean i <laughs> I'd almost disagree on all these points, but okay. I mean, I've said my views enough on it. Um, so I'll just give a couple of thoughts that I spoke to without, without talking to them. I didn't give my opinions to these people. These are completely non-techie people. Okay. First one picked it up um, and I've said to like a few people, um, now they've said that they've just picked it up and it feels light and doesn't have that quality sort of feel you get with sort of a... Not a hefty device, because no device is really heavy these days, um, but just a bit more sort of weight to it, which I can see what they mean. Which, yeah, I, I do genuinely much prefer that. So I prefer um, the lighter version. Now, I can't actually really feel the thinness much different in the hand, but obviously that is better in your pocket. Um, I do like the fact that in your pocket you don't have something bulging out. Uh, I like the sort of brushed finish all around the outside. Again, it's... Not that much of a worthy upgrade, in my opinion. Oh, no, it's not a worthy um, upgrade at all. That's why I haven't got Yeah, <laughs> so from I, mean, iPhone I, one. I definitely have a bit. <laughs> I mean, I did pick this up, and it is mainly iOS. That was sort of like, what can I do different? Um, panorama? But I can do that anyway. Um, so, yeah, I yeah. mean, one of the things that kind of made me kind of, if you've been reading my Twitter, you've been seeing that I'm a very confused man at the moment. Um, but one of the things I really liked was the video app and the reason is is because it is I don't know whether it's just because obviously I'm not used to holding other phones I'm not you know I, I'm not as accustomed with other phones as possible but like when you take a video the screen is your video yeah like I like I like the fact that the screen is your video and there's no like silly yeah. black bar and the fact that there's a double time it's wide <laughs> screen I just focused on... I mean, I said it the other day. I mean, if, if you want an iPhone, then it's the best iPhone. But at the end of the day, it's still an iPhone. <laughs> yeah. No, like, it, it's still nothing that exciting. It's the most simple OS, like, in the world. Um, but, I mean, my thing that I would say about iOS is that it used to be that you'd always go for it for the apps, that, like, it was just a center, just a long chat, basically. Yeah. Like, the, it shuts apps, like, front and center. Um, and that's why people went there, because there wasn't that much alternative. And when you went to Android, then the apps were always behind. But now, most of the apps you want are already on Android, and they're nearly always on Windows Phone as well. So, like, they are a real other alternative, and you get a lot more features on the, on the competitors. But I, I don't know. I mean, it is the simplest OS. Maybe they'll um, update it. I mean, we had a... I saw a video 
uh, pre iOS six, which was like this is what people want in iOS six, and it was like you like flipping app icons that showed like quick view mm. almost. And maybe they'll come in iOS seven. I don't know. But, maybe, but I agree. I, mean, I think why I have such problems now is because I've been saying that since iOS four. So so yeah. I, I I've given them two chances now and like well, now. I've... If I'm honest, I don't think they're listening to you. <laughs> no, I mean, a lot of people say that, but you can't just say that. Like, all right, fine, never change it. No, I, I like, don't say. Don't, don't, don't criticize them. Like, say they're brilliant. Oh, no, you can criticize. You, you can criticize them. What I mean is, when you said I've given them two chances to change, it's kind of like what well, everyone has. Is yeah, what I'm saying. I, I mean, I, but I've, I've seen they sold five million at the weekend. It's clearly still yeah, working. No, I I think that. It is ridiculous. In fact, in fact, the iPhone five line mm. that I'm being told about here is actually was actually longer than the four line. Yeah. No, it does. Uh, it just. It. I don't know. Let's just quickly ask Siri what she thinks. What's the best phone out? The Lumia nine twenty. <laughs> or coming out. It actually used yeah, to say, say that. that. Yeah. It doesn't want to say anything. It's confused. Um, so that's our thoughts on the iPhone 5. Like I said, if you want to see a full review, do check out links that we are going to leave yeah, in the description. Yeah, although you're not going to see much else. Yeah. <laughs> just, not just, like, because there isn't much else to it, to be honest. Yeah, well, speaking of phones, uh, as you know, because I put a video up on Thursday, Friday, uh, HTC and Nokia... Uh, HTC released has announced their new Windows phones. Yeah. Uh, Windows Phone 8X and the Windows Phone 8S. Obviously, the higher model is the X and the lower model is the S. Mm -hmm. They come in lo lovely colors. Yep. Pretty similar Very to Nokia. similar Nokia colors. And Nokia are actually suing. Oh, I didn't realize they are actually suing. Yeah, Nokia are, are going. They, they're in the. It, I read an article. There is a talk that Nokia are going to sue HTC oh, wow. for nicking sort of the colours and the design. Yeah, I was going to say, because they were very similar. The problem I have with this, and this is just for me, is Windows Phone is all about the colours. You can choose the colours of the tiles to be blue, yellow, red. Are these colours sounding familiar to you? Hmm. The colours of the phones. And I think that HTC have made this with Microsoft to match the UI. Yeah, I think it is more the design of the phone. Well, the designs, design in my the, opinion, the don't look that similar. If anything, the HTC looks more like an other phones than like the Windows. No, no the Nokia, <laughs> they do look very the it's, it's almost the same so. plastic. It's almost because it's obviously uh, the Lumia uses a um, really high quality CNC uh, injection molding, mm -hmm. so that, like they make like near to indestructible, like really nice phones. I mean, it's not what HTC use. Like HTC use a cheaper kind of plastic. But um, HTC work like square and square with Microsoft. Yeah, to, which to I think do this. Has annoyed them more than anything. Yeah, well, yeah, but yeah. who knows? Uh, will Nokia and HTC sue? Like, have a law battle? Will this be the new Apple versus Samsung? Yeah, but um, I mean, that was a ridiculous court case. In it's my opinion, still whereas, not even done. Whereas, yeah, whereas this, I think that they have a genuine, genuine thing on their hands here. I mean, if if Apple won against Samsung, then. I mean, I'm not on about the UI design. I know the UI design was ridiculous, but I mean, in terms of the like rectangular corners, kind of patent. I don't know. I don't know. But let's move on to gaming because gaming is where our heart is at the moment. Mm. Because if you didn't know, Where'd you say, yeah. We, well, if you didn't know, on Saturday, Ryan and I will be in London mm. at Eurogamer Expo. So if you're going to the Eurogamer Expo on Saturday, come and say hi. We will be around the show floor. Uh, Probably filming. Probably. <laughs> so try not to interrupt, interrupt our filming while we're filming. But outside of it, we'll, we'll be probably happy to say hi. Say hi. Hands. Say hi. Um, but now, Ryan, you've been waiting all episode for me to talk to you about this. Yes. This is a game that I read on a tweet from not a gamer as such. He plays games, but he's more of a YouTuber. But he, he tweeted this out, and it's called The War Z. Yeah, you showed me a now, screenshot of this, and uh, it's a PC game. Mm -hmm. Not sure it's going to be Mac as well, but it's a PC game. The graphics are amazing. Yes, they are. I've seen the <laughs> screenshot there. Right. Now, it's a game with no story. Okay. There's a backstory. You're on Earth. It, there's a zombie apocalypse. The zombies are attacking. That's I like the story. Already. But there's no missions as you are. There's no missions. There's no skill tree. There's no statistics. You are a character. It's a survival that you, Yeah, it's a survival game. But here's the cool part, which I think is what I why I really love this idea. 
quests are available that are submitted by other people. Hmm. So, for example, you're playing in this massive world, right, where you're killing zombies and doing whatever. You can mine, you can farm, you can do whatever. And then you come along and say, I want someone to help me kill this road of zombies. And I can And it's like, you'll pay me, say, $20. Not real dollars, 20 in-game dollars. And I go, yeah, sure, I'll help. Kill all those zombies. You give me the money. We're good, right? One thing that I read was this guy posted up on the community. He said, I would like a bodyguard. You must carry grenades, sniper rifle, uh, you know, machine gun, pistol. And we'll come and we'll, you know, we'll go and kill some zombies. They went into the woods and the guy stabbed him in the back and Nick got a stab. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite good because that, that sort of thing is, it, it's almost like a test of humanity kind of. It is, like, it's a test of humanity and it's, it's, it's weirdly real. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's <laughs> because of you're adapting it and you're almost creating it yourself. Like they're almost like real life situations kind of. Exactly. Thing. Like exactly. if a zombie apocalypse actually happens, then it could be having people that, that's ready to stab you in the back and people yeah. except unlike a real zombie apocalypse you can respawn <laughs> there is that <laughs> um the game is said to cost about two to five dollars a month i'm not sure which but i think it's that's not bad well, though i think i'm gonna have to hurriedly upgrade my gaming pc yeah well i'm gonna have to buy a gaming pc um but that is the war's end and i thought you might like that so yes, I, I read no, that and i, I thought this has got ryan written all over it yeah i can't wait to play this like i said i hope that's it you're a gamer yeah, we will definitely bring you coverage of that. <laughs> the entire episode will all be dedicated to that if that's there. It would just be me killing Ryan repeatedly. Hey, Ryan, let's go. Let's go into the forest. I ah! wish. <laughs> I swear you've got some real fame against me, honestly. <laughs> right. So next is um, the PS3 Super Slim. Weird name, but it says it all. It's a mm-hmm. uh, slim down PS3, even slimmer than this PS3 Slim. It's just a real it's super slim. <laughs> yeah, it's super slim. So, yeah, it was, it was a very descriptive, uh, descriptive name. But it's a bit late in its cycle, I think. Like, I know the PS3 is supposed to be supported for another couple of years yet, but the PS4 is almost definitely coming out next year. Uh, I think Sony actually said that to so some of their stockholders. I think they pretty much confirmed that mm-hmm. a new console is coming next year. So they, Well, they kind of needed to with the Wii U coming this November. Yeah, exactly, which I'm actually gradually getting more excited about. Yeah. Oh. It's Maybe different. because of the Nintendo TV. <laughs> but. Uh, let's talk about the Impulse Game Control. Yeah, now Impulse... Um, now, again, I love supporting Kickstarter projects and all that sort of thing. Now, this is yeah called the Impulse Game Controller, and it's a tiny little Bluetooth key ring. Um, okay. Which is just... Yeah, it's tiny, it's Bluetooth, and it just spits on your key ring. But it will allow you to play... Um, games whether you're on ios or android or i'm hoping windows phone as well um and also allow you to control your media as well so like if you're sat back watching video then you can just have it all on your key ring and it's just, just a nice little thing well, that's not bad it, it sounds quite cool actually yeah it's, it's gonna is it gonna be urban or, the, the only thing i'm kind of is it gonna be correct because obviously when you're holding a controller you kind of you, you're used to holding like a controller hmm. tiny little thing yeah, I mean, it looks quite comfortable. It's something that you have to see. It's very well designed. Okay, I'll have a look. I was going to uh, say, offline. definitely worth a look. Okay, before we get on to the big, big final discussion, I just want to quickly say that FIFA 13 is out in the App Store for iOS, and it is the first FIFA game to support multiplayer. Yeah, a long time ago when that was. And I would think that FIFA 13 being like a mainly massive multiplayer franchise... Would have had more player in their games by now. Well, I was I'm surprised that it didn't before. That's the only reason I bought FIFA 12. I actually thought it was not. Um, but I I think I'll be getting FIFA 13. I enjoy FIFA games mm. as much as it may surprise people. Uh, I actually because I, I don't I'm not a massive football fan, but no, I really not, do involve, enjoy football. I was gonna say they're, they're quite nice to just have your friend find, just have a couple of beers, and just yeah, exactly. You know, and well, be able to not even have to do it right now. You can just have a beer in your own house and. <laughs> Play online, is, you know, Bill on the other side of the planet. It's a very <laughs> angry episode today, isn't it? It's been a bit ranty. I tried to avoid it in this one as well. I was like, I wanted to set the world to rights in our like technology gripes section, but I didn't want it to be so heavy laden. But give us your thoughts on everything. Yes. Try not to be too angry at us. Try to be angry <laughs> at others. Um, <laughs> try and take a little bit of heat off. But <laughs> play nicely out there, people. Yes, that is all for this week's edition of Tech Brits. You can, of course, find us in the usual places 
at Twitter and at our email, tempers.gmail.com. And of course, you can find Ryan at gadget underscore Ryan, unless you're angry, in which day? What? I said, unless you're angry, in which day? <laughs> and gadgets, and gadgets, and add your name that's instead of GEs. Uh, we've had fun today. Uh, we will see you guys earlier than next week, hopefully, because of Eurogamer. Yep. Uh, but until next time, ciao.